Hi, my name is Leo. Welcome to the second part of electrostatics. Total electric flux through an enclosed surface does not depend either on size or shape of surface or on charge distribution but only on total charge within the surface. Gauss's law says that the total electric flux through an enclosed surface in free space is proportional to sum of all electric fluxes enclosed by that surface. So we can write the expression of Gauss's law. To do that, let's first draw a scheme. So first put a positive charge as a source of electric field in the middle of an object, object which is here a ball of radius r, uh, and then draw a few of electric field vectors going out from the positive source charge. For example, E2, E1, E3, and E4. Now we can calculate electric flux for each of these electric field vectors drawn. These electric field uh, vectors we've drawn are not all, but so only some of these. Uh, this object has. So Ps1 is E1S1, Ps2 is E2S2, and finally all the way to Psn, so electric flux of some nth, nth electric field En times Sn. Then sum all of these electric, flux vec uh, electric fluxes up and get that Ps, total electric flux, is Ps1 plus Ps2 all the way plus Psn. And here we have to know that sphere area S is 4r squared pi to solve this formula. And also formula for electric field that uh, E is equal to k times q over r squared, where k, k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. And so here we end this calculation with E out of the brackets. All of these surfaces give the total surface of this object, of this sphere, of this ball, excuse me. And then C is, as we've said, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, times, which is equal to K, times Q over R squared times 4r squared pi and we cancel this out in order to get q over epsilon 0. So finally we have expression for Gauss's law which is that Ps in an enclosed surface of an enclosed surface is equal to sum of all charges in the surface over epsilon 0 which is vacuum permittivity. We can compare Gauss's to Coulomb's law, while in Coulomb's law we get electric field if we know positions of charged particles. Using Gauss's law we can get distribution of charging charges using the electric field. We can apply Gauss's law on some regular geometric solids which are positively charged, for example. So let's do that. The first we have is sphere, hollow ball with radius big R. Its electric field can be calculated only when point charge is outside or at the sphere. So we have a ball with radius R, some point outside E distant from 4R, its electric field is E. The sphere is filled only with positive charges at its surface. The first case is when big, small r is greater than, than small, big r, so a point charges outside the sphere, and then the electric field of homogeneously charged sphere is equal to charge of point charge distant for this small r from the center of ball. And if it is inside of sphere, sphere, meaning small r is greater than r, electric field is zero. Final case is when point charge is exactly at the sphere, then this electric field is here marked as E0, the maximum electric field, and here we have also sigma, surface charge density, which is proportion of Q charge over total spheres surface 4R squared pi. And then this uh, maximum electric field, e, uh, electric field E0, 
is k e that's 1 over 4 pi, f, 4 pi epsilon 0 times q over r squared e that's uh, sigma over epsilon let's draw a graph to represent this dependence of electric field on distance from the center you can see uh, that this is this big r and this is epsilon 0 and in this point point is the biggest electric field and this is exponential uh, exponential dependence so when distance of point charge small r is smaller than radius of spe sphere big r meaning point charge is within the sphere there is no electric field now we have the second uh, case which is ball also geometric solid it is filled in all parts of its volume with positive charge we have the same distance r some electric field e of some point electric field e in some point and then the first case again when this distance is bigger than a radius of a ball uh, electric field can be calculated there directly using the same formula as for sphere if it's inside the ball we actually observe the imaginary ball of radius r where the point charge is situated on as well as the outer ball which is actual ball then if we use uh, ch volume charge density we get proportion of charge q out of outer ball and its volume v out is equal to proportion of charge q in of inner ball and its volume v in now using the formula for ball's volume which is four thirds r cubed pi get expression for q out expressed using q in so we have this expression finally put this expression for charge in the formula for electric field using gauss's law and get this formula for electric field which is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times q or q in, in of inner ball over big r times distance over radius small r over big r the final case is again when this distance is equal to radius meaning the point charge is on both surface then it's equal to E0 which is maximum electric field so E0 maximum electric field is 0 is E times R small r over big R and finally draw the same graph the similar graph as we've drawn for sphere so dependence of electric field on uh, this distance r and it's very similar to that of, uh, of a sphere but here we have a linear dependence when small r is 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 smaller less than big r so even when a point is inside the ball it has some electric field which increases linearly the next example is plane here we have to observe plane as a plane going through a cylinder and is parallel to its basis of surfaces S so we have some plane it is as part one plane of a cylinder going through cylinder and this cylinder has basis of surface S on each side of the plane are electric flux vectors Ψ1 and Ψ2 which are of equal magnitude because of the same surface S equal to area of cylinder base and their electric fields are also equal and all of them are perpendicular to the plane so we have that, all, uh, that both Ψ1 and Ψ2 are ES and now if we have plane as washed from this angle which is positively charged as we've said for example here are some of the electric field vectors we uh, see that all of them are of the same magnitude so electric field electric field vectors E 
Electric flux is product of electric field and surface as well as cosine of angle which uh, isn't written here in this C1 of C2 equal to ES because we have 90 degrees cosine of 90 is, zero, is 1. Therefore using these formulas and Gauss's law we get that Psi total, so total is Psi1 plus Psi2 which is 2 ES as we see as we can see it is Q over epsilon 0 thanks to Gauss's law and using all of these we get that electric field of a plane is Q over 2 S uh, or uh, times epsilon 0 or epsilon 0 which is sigma over 2 epsilon 0 now we have a wire wire is actually a body whose dimensions other than length are negligible so here we're going to apply length charge density lambda So var of some radius r, but the most important is its uh, length. It's positively charged. So as we've said, we apply lambda, which is proportion of charge taken and the taken length of the var, and its surface is two r pi, which is circumference of its of this uh, circular intersection times L which is the the certain length of this wire we've taken and now we get that using formula for electric flux which is E times 2R pi times L so E times S which is equal to Q over epsilon 0 according to Gauss's law that total that, uh, that this uh, electric field is k times 2 lambda over r which is electric field of r and in the end there is a capacitor which consists actually of two planes with opposite charge so a capacitor and two planes two planes it has two plates actually one is positively and the other is of opposite charge so negatively charged if, for example, we take a positive charge and put it either above or below a capacitor, each pair of electric field vectors, E plus and E minus, here we're, uh, we've named it in here like this, are going to be cancelled out since electric field of electrostatic attraction force is equal in magnitude to that of repulsion electrostatic force, but uh, opposite in a direction. So we can see that they are oppositely directed. So there is no electric field at either side outside of a capacitor. Therefore, total electric field outside of a capacitor on both of its sides is zero. So we have E equal to zero at this upper and E equal to zero at its, this part below the capacitor. However, within a capacitor, a positive charge is attracted by negative plane and repelled by positive, which is why electric field vectors of both electrostatic forces point same direction and are of same magnitude. Therefore, a capacitor's electric field here, inside the capacitor, is sum of these two electric field vectors. So we have that total E inside the capacitor is E plus plus E minus vectors, and it is equal to 2 times S uh, uh, sigma over 2 epsilon 0, which is electric field of a plane. And uh, finally, this E, electric field of a capacitor, is sigma over epsilon 0, which we can see that it is exactly 2 times greater than electric field of a plane. Let's imagine we want to push a positive point electric charge, small q, from a reference point. Say it's infinity because in infinity is infinitely small force rounded to zero due to infinitely big distance r to a point of electric field of positively charged ball of radius big R which is uh, filled with positive charges at all parts of its volume. And somewhere in infinity is small point positive charge. Distance between them is small r. At r equal to r, the electric field is maximum, E0, and gradually decreases exponentially as distance r increases. 
Since we know two charges of same charge will repel, these two charges will repel and therefore we will have to do some work in order to overcome repelling electrostatic force between these two charges. The shorter distance R between the charges is, the force is bigger and the bigger force has to be done. The total work is calculated as sum of all of the worlds at particular points of the distance we've traveled, which are delta W, which is force F times delta R, this distance, and potential is area beneath the curve. Electric potential, as we can see, is marked with Greek letter phi. So potential is an amount of electric potential energy, which is equal to work, so electric potential energy or work, which this point charge has uh, from infinity has to do so as to come to a chosen point of an electric field. So it's proportion of electric po of potential energy or work over point test charge Q, small q. And potential energy now we have is actually work, so force times distance at times d, which is uh, uh, this force is Coulomb's force Fc or Fe electrostatic force. And uh, now we, we apply uh, Coulomb's uh, law and get finally when this R cancels out that potential energy is K times source charge over uh, test charge thus times test charge over distance R. And using formulas for potential and potential energy we get that phi potential is this electric potential energy, so K times Q times Q over R and all this over Q and it is now K times source charge over distance R. Difference between two potentials, which is work, which has to be done to move test charge from its starting point to arbitrarily chosen point of electric field is called voltage and it's marked with big U or big V. There are actually deltas in front of them, so delta U or delta V, because there are differences, but it's usually written only as U or V. Voltage is also called electric potential difference or electric tension. So voltage is proportion of work and charge, W over Q, also difference of potentials of points A and B, so phi A minus phi B. Finally, we can also define work between two points of the distance the point charge has traveled, A and B, which are distant for RA and RB distances from the center of the charge respectively. So work is difference of these two potential energies, so we have that work W is delta of potential energy EP, which is potential energy in point A minus potential energy in point B, and apply formula for potential energy k, k, k times source charge times point charge, uh, test charge over uh, distance to get this formula for, charge, uh, for this work. Let's take an example of a positively charged particle of charge small q which moves throughout uh, through a homogeneous electric field E produced by a capacitor. So the positively charged particle here we have these two plates of capacitor, one is positive and one is negative. And so this positive charge, positive particle, we have here, is attracted by negative plate of capacitor. And for this distance, D, between these two plates, is needed some electrostatic force F equal to Q times E, meaning an outer force has to do this work of the same, so this outer force has to do work which has same magnitude but opposite direction. So we have that outer force is minus electrostatic force which is minus Q times electric field vector. When the particle moves, its potential energy changes, which is actually worked down by outer forces. Therefore, uh, we have that delta of potential energy is minus work, minus W. So here we have the minus sign, so as to get positive number since the work is negative, because work has to be done rather than it's gotten. So negative work because we have to do it. And work as we had it is uh, outer force times d distance distance between plates now calculate this and get 
that a delta change in potential energy is electrostatic force Fe times distance between place D, which is QED, so test charge times electric field times D distance, and from this formula uh, we can uh, we can now also uh, put for voltage which is phi one minus phi two so pot difference of potentials between two uh, points and the potential is potential energy over Q to get that U voltage is delta E P so change of potential energy over Q and now we apply this change of potential energy formula in this formula for voltage to get that voltage is product of electric field E times distance D between the plates and from this we can express that electric field is voltage over distance between the plates from which we can get also another measuring unit for electric field and accept Newton per Coulomb which is volt per meter. For a particle moving in a homogeneous electric field we can apply Newton's law of motion especially the second law which says that force is product of mass and acceleration Ma which is here equal to electrostatic or Coulomb's force QE so charge, test charge times its electric field and therefore we equate this to get this equation and from this we can get expression for the particles acceleration which is A equal to QE over M. The physical quantity which describes ability of a physical body to store electric charge is called capacitance. When observing capacitance we have to know how charge is transported from a body to another one. For that transportation of charge work has to be done in order to charge an electrically neutral body. At any given moment the body will have the charge of Q equal to the charge it has gotten from another body delta Q. We also know charge of an electrically conducting body and its electric potential are directly proportional by a constant we call C. Using C constant charge Q can be expressed also using potential phi as Q equal to C times phi. From this formula we can get equation for C constant which is C equal to Q over phi where C is capacitance of given body. So we can see that a capacitance is actually a proportion of a body's charge and its potential. Its measuring unit is farad which is marked with big F. Capacitance property is especially used by electrical components called capacitors whose schematic symbol used in physics and electronics you can see here. Capacitor is an electrical component which consists of at least two plates conducting electric current and they are charged with opposite charges. One is positively and the other is negatively charged. These plates are separated by vacuum or a dielectric material. A dielectric is a kind of electric insulator which can be polarized if electric field is applied and can store char charges and at the same time it does not condu conduct electric current. Using dielectric constant epsilon r of a dielectric material situated in a capacitor we can express formula for capacitance which indicates the next. So we have this formula that C capacitance is equal to epsilon r times epsilon zero times S surface of plates over distance between plates. So it indicates the next that the greater surface of capacitor plates is or smaller distance between them is the greater capacitance is. Furthermore capacitor has certain energy it stores. Now use these formulas I write here to get capacitor energy E. So E capacitor energy is equal to change of work which is equal to one half of QU, so charge times voltage, or one half of C times U squared. And this is energy of a capacitor. There are two ways of how to connect capacitors of certain capacitances so as to get an equivalent capacitor of one to capacitance. An equivalent capacitor is a capacitor with the same capacity as the capacity of the created electric circuit. We are going to use an example of three capacitors in connection. 
So first this connection in series. This first way in series where uh, here we have that uh, the total there is the total capacitance actually the reciprocal value of total capacitance of equivalent capacitance is sum of all reciprocal values of the capacitors in the circuit. So 1 over C is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. But on these pictures you can see here how they are connected in series and they are equivalent to this one equivalent trans uh, capacitor of capacitance C. So we have this formula for capacitance in series capacitors and we get this formula knowing that uh, that charges and all at all of these capacitors are same and that total voltage is sum of all the voltages of all voltage drops on this on on all of these capacitor capacitors the other possible connection is in parallel so here we have again three three capacitors which are connected to a source of voltage U and they have capacitances, capacitances C1, C2 and C3 and now the total capacitance here is a sum of capacitances of these capacitors we can get this formula for the total capacitance in parallel circuit using parallel connection of, of capacita capacitors uh, using this formulas so the total charge is sum of all charges on these capacitors and that voltage is equal to every voltage drop of these capacitors in this video you've learned more about electrostatics thanks for watching and stay with us